What's up, YouTube? It's your boy JP's on the keys, and this two is right video today. And we got something different. This is an old clip 1965 from the BBC. This is Could You Be a Steeplejack? Like, of course, I was looking down the Fred Dib the rabbit hole, and I just ended up on this video. So I feel like this would be cool. It's be something interesting to watch. So without further ado, I really appreciate all you guys for all the, all the love, all the sharing, all everything. But let's go, man. These are men who've got to the top. Men who have to get to the top to be able to do their jobs. They're steeplejacks, of course. The clear-headed, sure-footed workmen you sometimes see shinning up snaking ladders which they've pinned to chimneys three and four hundred feet high. Hmm. Their job is one of the most dangerous in the world. You fall off a stack like this only once. So if you're a steeplejack, then you're a careful man. It's not just a dangerous job, it's a lonely one too. Two or three hundred feet up, you've only the birds for company. Birds and the wind. Hmm. The wind that always howls around your ears. Steeplejacks like lamplighters seem to be a dying race. A five-year apprenticeship to learn how to keep factory chimneys cheerfully smoking for less money and more risk than a boiler maker or a plater, for instance, doesn't appeal to many young men these days. Mm. You guys just love Seven it, I guess. an hour for a top jack for a man who's risking his neck. Seven and ninepence an hour for a top jack for a man who's risking it. Mm, seven seven dollars and nine cents an hour back in nineteen sixty five. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Consider how much like the minimum wages in a lot of states now. Minimum wage is like thirteen dollars, like fifteen dollars in some states. So it really isn't that crazy. That much isn't really that big of an improvement. His neck every moment he's working isn't what you might call a great incentive. It takes more than a head for heights to be a steeplejack. You need good sea legs too, and a strong stomach, because the big chimneys can sway like a ship on a bad channel crossing. Mm -hmm. But chimneys are getting higher and higher. Thousand foot monsters are already on the drawing boards. Ooh, a thousand foot chimneys Power crazy. stations in Britain will soon have 650 foot stacks, and the scarcity of trained steeplejacks to build and to maintain them is worrying British industry. Some firms have a backlog of six or nine months work and not enough men to do it. But one British firm, the biggest firm of steeplejacks in the world, <coughs> thinks that it's found the answer to the problem. They've started a school for steeplejacks. The students are taught the theory and the practice of their trade. Now the idea of this exercise is to get into the chair, pull yourself up, tie yourself off and transfer from this chair into that chair without holding on to any of the scaffolding. Now it's very important that you tie this knot properly because your life depends on it. Right, now I'll have a go and then you can all have a go after me. Hmm. I'll show you how I've done. Pull what yourself upper, up. What an upper body strength. It's a sheer practical demonstration that really counts when it comes to showing you how to live in the air hundreds of feet off the ground. Transfer it over to this one. Lower yourself down. The basic element in the whole job is the ladder, the 16-foot aluminium ladder which each man needs to get him to work up top. The security of the ladder depends on the dog, which is a, a slender steel hook. A hole is nicked out into the chimney brickwork, a mere one inch deep. Into it goes a wooden plug, and then the dog is hammered home. If it's not properly done, then the ladder isn't secure, and each man does his own laddering. This is his lifeline, and he wants his lifeline to be in his own hands. Of course. Mr. Bowman, just how dangerous is this job? 
to a trained man, steeplejack work is quite safe. To an untrained man or poorly trained man, it's lethal. What particular dangers do they meet on a, on a big stack, two or three hundred feet high? Mainly due to the de deterioration of the structure. The brickwork often becomes loose and bricks can literally be pulled out by hand from the face of the chimney. So they do take their lives in their hands every day? Oh, they most certainly do. What sort of accident rate is there in this job? Well, the steeplejack trade is alleged to be more dangerous than mining, but I would say on an average about four to six men, a steeplejacks, are killed a year in this country. But as there are so few steeplejacks, it's a very high percentage. <laughs> have you lost any men yourself at any time? We have in the past, yes. What sort of qualities do you look for in a man who comes to you and says, I want to be a steeplejack, I want to join your course? Well, most of all, dependability. Fitness and general ability, alertness and keenness. It's no good having a, a man take the job just for the money. He's completely useless. And what is the money? Well, that varies tremendously from a semi-skilled man to a fully trained steeplejack, but it would vary on the average between 20 to 30 pounds, but a really skilled man would earn considerably more. So the semi-skilled men, although they take the risks, they're not really very highly paid, are no, they? No, no, not, not as such, no. Have safety methods improved at all over the years? I would say so, yes, most definitely. Uh, steeplejack work basically at the moment is as it was 100 or even 100, 200 years ago. But far more care is taken of gear. The men are far more intelligent. They, they take a great care of their equipment because they realize that their lives depend upon it. What was your job before you took up steeplejacking? Well, I came out of the Navy and then I went baking, you know, confectionery, what, wedding cakes and so forth. And what made you decide that you wanted to be a steeplejack? Well, the bakery I was in was underground and I thought to myself, well, I might as well have a nice outside job. Not today, mind you. But in the summer I wanted a nice outside job, so I decided steeplejacking. Well, what sort of things do you have to watch out for? Do you have to sort of go into any training or keep yourself physically fit or anything like that to be a steeplejack? Yes, you've got to keep yourself fit. You mustn't get too fat. You mustn't get overweight. This is one of the great dangers, drinking, I suppose. Yeah. You wouldn't want to go up there with very much of a hangover, would you? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't be blown away. The men who come here to the school, and you're now instructing in the school, the men who come here, do they come from any particular trade? Are they already in the building trade, for instance? Building trade, and a vast majority is ex-Navy, merchant Navy. What attracts them to it, do you think? Well, I think it's a job that, that uh, not very many people can do. I mean, there's a million people in su such and such a trade, but there's not a lot in steeplejacking. <coughs> and you're really on your own once you're up top. Well, now, somebody like me who's never been up a stack, could I climb up this stack up here? Well, I reckon you could, but as you've never been up, if you do want to, I'd like you to put on the harness, and that'll be okay. Well, I might have a try. This All is right. The you want me to use. This is a harness. Right. It is very comfortable, although it looks a bit awkward. Take it into. Ah. What is the parachute harness? Just concentrate and relax. There's your helmet. Right. Concentrate and relax. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> well, this is a 120-foot brick stack, a boiler stack, they call them, on a laundry in southeast London. They say that you get a lovely view of whoa, Camberwell from the top. I'll soon be able to tell you whether you do or not, I hope. Isn't there a phrase somewhere? It's as easy as falling off a chimney. Or is that one I made up myself? And this is a hard way to get to work. Hmm. It gets very windy. But you can feel the heat coming out of this chimney. Or at least I can. Oh, these boys can have this job. <laughs> I 
think I'll come down. Ah, well, it's good to be down. There must be easier ways of getting a, a pleasant view of Camberwell. And I can tell you that there's plenty of room at the top up there for you, but not for me. Huh. I don't know, man. That, that's it's a crazy job, man. These people are really just like they said. The pay isn't crazy, and I seem like it seems like there's not that many steeplejacks around like nowadays. I don't, I don't really hear anything about them now because it's like, what type of new technology would they use for now? Would it be they have like a lift or somebody would be up on a little, uh, a little personal. It would get like some type, I don't know, like it would get, maybe get like a drone to do it or something. I don't know. But uh, I feel like that was kind of interesting to watch. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate all you guys. But um, leave a like if you enjoy. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Uh, do not forget to turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. I'm out. Peace.